SPM Live, subscribe, we speaking box. George, SPM Live, subscribe, we speaking box. He's an SPM Live, subscribe, we speaking box. Kenny, yo, let's be speaking box. SPM Live, subscribe, we speaking box. SPM Live, subscribe. Box Advance is Kenneth SPM Boxing. Don't request to subscribe. Get that SPM Boxing live. Let's speak boxing. Um, it's Sunday. I got time to speak boxing. So live and subscribe. Here at SBN Boxing, we cover um, post-fight, pre-fight um, predictions. We cover boxing, all the major events, the major fights out there here at the Boxing Genius house. We're actually not here. This is actually my house. But we always go to my, my, my pop's house, the Boxing Genius house. With Chino, um, Nelson, the godfather, the Boxing Genius, myself, um, and, you know, a lot of friends and family. You know, but the little MGM, the little MGM casino over there, my the Boxing Genius house is, you know, it's, it's under reconstruction right now, so we won't, you know, the major fights, we're, we're probably going to go to um, a friend of the family's, Frank's house, so we're going to be covering that live over there, but um, it's Sunday, you know, I'm not going to be working or anything like that, I'm usually busy, so I'm sorry for the fans that haven't been able to see me continue, continue to make videos like this, I haven't been in a house for a while, I've been up and down, I'm drinking some Moscato, you know, um, but we're, 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 we're just going to speak some boxing. For those who's wondering, got the, the GOAT. This is the GOAT right here. The greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay. Uh, Dolce & Gabbana has some, has some nice-ass uh, shirts out there. They have different ones, so um, check it out. Go to Dolce & Gabbana. They have different Cassius Clay shirts. They also have some nice-ass Al Pacino shirts out there. Um, so, big up to Dolce. But anyways, um, what do we do here in SBM Boxing? We speak boxing. Anyways, um, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about Miguel Cotto and Sergio Martinez. Sergio Martinez, is uh, he has three weight division titles. He's a former three-division uh, world title holder. Um, he's 38 and 4, 31 KOs. Um, that guy's a fighter. Cotto's known for um, he's building a legacy for himself. He doesn't duck. He doesn't dodge anybody whatsoever. Um, and he, he coming off a, a, a comeback victory, just coming off of, a loss up against Austin Trout. He was over here in Orlando, took on Delvin Rodriguez, um, switched trainers again, and got with uh, <clears throat> Hall of Famer Freddie Roach, put on a great performance against Delvin Rodriguez, knocked Delvin Rodriguez out, and lined himself up for a big mega fight. Put himself in a situation where he can pick and choose his opponents. You know, he, he could have picked Canelo Alvarez. That would have been a good draw. And I know... Uh, Golden Boy, Golden Boy was definitely shooting for that fight, but you know he was he was shooting a little bit more for legacy, you know, uh, at least in my eyes, you know, he wanted that uh, fourth division world title. So what did he decide to go to? He selected a uh, WC middleweight champion Sergio Martinez, which is fifty one and two, you know, with twenty eight KOs. Now Sergio Martinez, he's peaking thirty eight. You know, this fight's going to take place in Madison Square Garden, June seventh. He's thirty eight years old, and a lot of people are questioning him question him whatsoever as far as age because he's been he's been he's been getting hurt and hurt and hurt and you know he's 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 not the same Sergio Martinez as that's what a lot of people think um but you know one of the main things about this fight this fight's going to take place at uh, uh one pound less one pound less than the the the, the full weight at 160 in the weight division. So Cotto's definitely asking Miguel Cotto, and it's going to take place at 159 catch weight instead of the full weight um, for the division at 160. And, you know, when, when this fight was taking place and before this fight was scheduled, Sergio Martinez was getting a little upset, which I completely understand, but it completely, you know, I just, you know, hearing him speak, hearing his interview speak, hearing his points, I understand what he's getting to, but I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. He kind of contradicted himself, which kind of pitched me off about Sergio Martinez. Sergio Martinez was getting upset. Um, the reason he was getting upset because Miguel Cotto had demands. And, uh, you know, and more and more in his interviews, the more and more that, you know, he's getting a little upset. He's just like he did uh, against uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. He went, quote, unquote, he said he's going to knock out Miguel Cotto. You know, he's going to knock out Miguel Cotto. Like I said, Miguel Cotto is no joke, man. He's 30, 38 and 4, but he's definitely no joke. But this fight itself, it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a good fight, you know. Um, but he's, it's going to take place in Madison Square Garden in New York. And he has, as far as money, as far as the draw, Miguel Cotto, regardless if Sergio Martinez is the champion. And that's one of, one of the points that Sergio Martinez was bringing out. He was like, I'm the champion. I'm the champion. I'm the champion. He's not supposed to be making demands. He wants my belt. I'm the champion. I call the shots. 
But in all reality, who's the bigger draw? And especially we're talking about Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden, you know, he's the bigger, bigger following and support out there in Madison Square Garden. There's nobody else in New York that holds it down like Miguel Cotto. And the thing about Madison Square Garden, another reason he picked Madison Square Garden besides Orlando because he had a great draw. And, you know, I was there um, in the house over there at uh, the Enway Arena, and that place was packed. It was Cotto'd out, you know. There was motherfuckers with head, red headbands with Cotto playing congas, dancing salsa merengue outside, all crazy, but they were all about Cotto. Um, he had a big Puerto Rican Latin community back in, in, in Orlando, but it's, it's even crazier out there in New York. And every time he's fought, besides once, which is a fight against Austin Trout, um, he, he's won in New York. You know, as this fight was um, progressing, 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 every time that you feel like the deal was done, they were going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth um, before they finalized this contract. Um, you know, Miguel Cotto was asking for a lot of money, uh, quite a bit of money, and then not just that, he, was, he had some situations, you know, he wanted to get down to 159, which definitely upset Sergio Martinez. But thankfully, this, fight, this fight's happening. There's going to be an interesting fight. This fight's definitely going to be an interesting fight. But uh, Sergio Martinez said, you know, that, that, you know, Miguel Cotto, you know, he should never forget that I'm the champion. And he has a lot of demands being, you know, towards the champion. Um, and he feels that he literally, Miguel Cotto, is not going to last more than five rounds with him. Um, and, you know, he feels that Miguel Cotto making all these demands and shit like that. He feels like, you know, Cotto really doesn't want this fight. And he can't, you know, fight on fight if they go ahead and get into this, you know, square circle that uh, he's not going to be able to resist him. He's not going to be able to take his punishment. He's not going to be able to take his power. Um, but, you know, will, will that one, that's my question to you, will that one pound make a difference? Will that one pound make a difference? Now, one thing I, you have to respect, you have to respect on the simple fact that there's no, and you know what, um, pound for pound so-called Andre Ward. Because I know a lot of you people like Andre Ward out there. And I'm an Andre Ward fan as well. But I'm not going to put Andre Ward in the Mayweather category. I'm not going to put Andre Ward in Manny Pacquiao category. I won't even put Andre Ward in the Marquez category yet as far as legendary and being top pound for pound fighter. You know, because Miguel Cotto, him being the smaller fighter, coming up to, at 154, coming up in weight. And, you know, Miguel Cotto doesn't hydrate well at 154. Better yet, he's going to come out 159. He doesn't have a rehydration clause in that fight. So Sergio Martinez can go ahead and be at 159, and he can hydrate himself as high as he wants to. Unlike Andre Ward's ass, he, he always has a little, uh, you know, a little hydration, even though he's a little five pounds off, you know, hey, you, you know, you got to come fight me, you got to come fight me, but yeah, you're the pound for pound champ, but people don't see that. But anyways, that's a whole different story. I'll, I'll, I'll get into that, you know, some other time. He just needs to take his ass and fight Triple G and stop messing around. But anyways, this is going to be a good fight. This is going to be a good fight um, between Miguel Cotto versus Sergio Martinez. It's definitely going to be a good fight. And, you know, Miguel Cotto's history, for you guys who don't know Miguel Cotto whatsoever, you know, um, he, he's fought the best. He's fought, you know, he hasn't ducked and dodged anyone whatsoever. You know, he broke his stardom around like 2006. 2006, he was sitting there fighting. You know, he, he, he beat Quintana. He beat Zab Judah. He beat Mosley. Bullshit has... Alfonso Gomez, I remember Alfonso Gomez, he knocked him down with a jab, or, well anyways, that was a crazy ass fight, but he lost, he lost around 2008, 2008, around 2008, uh, 2007, 2008, that's when Mayweather kind of retired, and that's where the boxing genius gets a little bit upset, he, he respects Mayweather, but he just, he, he has that chip on his shoulder as to why around 2000, 2007, 2008, even 2009, Mayweather is out the mix. You know, he lost to Antonio Margarito. Now, Margarito went ahead and took on Sugar Shane Mosley. Sugar Shane Mosley exposed him as far as his hand wraps and stuff like that. So that, there's that big controversy. Did he use them hand wraps against Miguel Cotto? Which I believe he did. Why? Because why would you use their, your hand wraps against a, a washed up Sugar Shane Mosley? But yet you're not going to use it against the baddest dude in boxing. That's undefeated Puerto Rican champ Miguel Cotto. You're, you're definitely going to use. It. But anyways, long story short, after that loss, he fight a, a fighter by the name of Michael Michael Jennings. TKO knocked him out. Joshua Claudi. Miguel Cotto hasn't been the same. Joshua Claudi. That was a good fight. Claudi felt like he got robbed. Miguel Cotto was actually winded in that fight. That was it was a split decision, but that was a tough fight. That was a tough fight for uh, Miguel Cotto. He took on Manny Pacquiao. Got knocked out by Manny Pacquiao, TKO, 12th round, Manny Pacquiao busted him up. 
but he was he was there flush. He dropped down in weight to go ahead and fight Manny Pacquiao. Um, at welterweight, he lost his welterweight, uh, you know, WBO title. Um, but he came back and he started hitting up New York, beat Yuri Foreman. I don't. That was a weird ass fight, man. When he fought Foreman, matter of fact, I was in, I was in New York. I was actually out there for business. I wanted to go catch the fight. It was crazy. I was also uh, I was over there in the Hamptons. I'm not sure if you guys remember New York, but I was actually at a steakhouse, a burger joint steakhouse. Um, he was actually one of the Iron Chefs. He opened up a restaurant over there. It was it was a great restaurant. I finished up setting him up and stuff like that. And I was driving all the way from over there um, to New York, but I didn't catch the fight. You know, that was that was a few hours away. Traffic was crazy, and I ended up sleeping in the car because when I by the time I got there, it was packed. I started looking for hotels, so I'll never forget that Yuri Foreman fight because my ass slept in the car right near. Uh, um, <clears throat> I, I was right by a park, you know. I, I don't know if it was Central Park or whatever, but I remember I was near a park just sleeping in my car in New York. It was crazy. But anyways, after that fight, he took on Mayorga. My, my, my after that fight, he got his rematch, changed trainers, went with Antonio Margarito, completely got his redemption back for Antonio Margarito, put on a great performance. With the same trainer, Diaz, he went ahead and took on Floyd Mayweather Jr. The United decision, lost to Floyd Mayweather Jr., put on a great, great fight against Floyd Mayweather Jr., lost against Austin Trout, Came back, beat Devil Rodriguez with the new trainer, Freddie Roach. And now, to this day, we're with Sergio Martinez. So, Miguel Cotto definitely has that resume. He, hey, he has that resume. Unlike Sergio Martinez, yes, he, he really didn't fight nobody. Sergio Martinez, you know, um, he broke stardom late in his career. You know, I remember even, you know, when I first seen Sergio Martinez, I didn't even know who the hell he was. He lost to uh, Antonio Margarito. This was all the way back in 2000. I was a freshman in college, and he lost um, to uh, Antonio Margarito. That was a good fight. That was a pretty good fight, you know, but he just couldn't take um, Margarito back then. You know, he couldn't handle Margarito back then. You know, I remember him fighting uh, several fighters, several fighters. He fought uh, uh, Alvaro Gamboa. I remember him fighting Perez. And I know he fought a lot of bunch of Mora. He fought a lot of other fighters before that. He fought uh, William Stone. Not Paul Williams, I'll see Richard Williams. Um, but, there, you know, the list, the list goes on, on and on and on. But, you know, I started picking up on him when he actually, he won. Actually, no, it was a draw. I'm sorry, let me backtrack. It was a draw. It was around 2010, 2009. Actually, 2008, I'm not sure. He fought Kermit Cintron. Cintron, that was a good-ass fight. And it was a, um, it, it was a good fight. After the Cintron fight, he fought Paul Williams. Paul Williams put it on him. But a lot of people thought that Sergio Martinez won that fight. Paul, before before he took on Paul Williams again, he fought Kelly Pavlik. Kelly Pavlik's a badass motherfucker. But anyways, he ended up beating Kelly Pavlik, United Decision. Paul Williams came back, man, and that was the scariest. And I was a big Paul Williams fan. I was a big Paul Williams fan then. And Sergio Martinez, I, I was wondering why um, Mayweather around that time didn't take on Paul Williams at that time. He didn't take on, you know, I was kind of upset at that time because I thought May uh, Mayweather would have had, that would have been a good fight if, you know, Back then, even even 2010, because I said 2007, 2000, or actually 2008 and 2009, around 2010, um, Paul Williams was in the mix, and Paul Williams was bad dude. So Mayweather could have fought Paul Williams. He could have fought Cotto where he was undefeated. He could have fought Margarito after Margarito beat Cotto, and then you have Paul Williams in the mix. That's four fighters that Mayweather should have went ahead and took on. And, but anyways, um, after the Paul Williams for, fight, he KO'd Paul Williams. That was scary. You know, um, he beat some other guys. You know, he ended up beating Barker. He ended up beating Matthew Macklin um, more recently. And then he beat Herbio Cesar Chavez Jr. Uh, Martin Murray fight. A lot of people felt he lost that fight. You know, but it was a United's decision. All in all, you know, I, the, the reason I gave this breakdown, I know you guys watch a lot of boxing and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm a little bit more in-depth in SB and boxing. We're going to cover fights. That's what, exactly what we do. We're going to give our fight predictions. And a lot of people will sit there and say, hey, what's your fight prediction if we'll go Cotto versus Sergio Martinez fight? Um, both fighters are good fighters. You know, I think uh, definitely regardless of the fact, um, Miguel Cotto is going to be the smaller guy coming into this fight. He's going to be the smaller guy. Um, his power is not going to carry um, at the 160. You know, I think he has a lot of punching power at 154 and stuff like that. Um, but I think Sergio Martinez is going to eat them punches. You know, I don't think it's going to be... Um, 
I don't think he's going to be a good, uh, a easy fight for Miguel Cotto. Um, the only way I see Miguel Cotto winning this fight, he needs to be cautious, 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 because Miguel Cotto is a boxer. I um, mean, he's actually he, he's a brawler more than anything. He likes to press. Um, yes, he's a boxer. I notice when he starts getting tired, like the Manny Pacquiao fight and his all the other fights, he likes to backpedal and he likes to counter, and he does a good job doing it. But he actually gets winded doing it. You know, Miguel Cotto's endurance is definitely questionable at that weight. You know, coming into the sixth, seventh round, the more power shots he lands, especially at the Austin Trial fight, he was letting his hands go, but he was winded. So I would like to see Freddie Roach and how Freddie Roach changes him and 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 disciplines him as far as. Um, Working the, body, um, working the body, working upstairs, boxing, staying off the ropes, taking a fight to the center of the ring, and not just that, picking and choosing the right time to go ahead and take his break because fighters, you're going to take a break, but you got to be able to take a break at the right time. Um, but Sergio Martinez, you know, Miguel Cotto has that dis I mean, advantage because Sergio Martinez didn't look good his last several fights. You know, he's definitely winded. He's injury, 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 injury. And uh, Sergio Martinez, way back when, he used to fight four or five times a year. You know, the last several years, except for this past year, he was the, he only fought once. Um, other than that, he's always fought twice. He always fought three times. He's always been active. But as he gets older, the body, just like Marquez, the body's going to start reacting differently um, to the training. So I think that's the only thing that um, Miguel sees as an advantage in that fight. I think Miguel Cotto, the only way he's going to win um, against that fight, against Sergio Martinez, he has to take it the distance. He's going to have to box Sergio Martinez. And Sergio Martinez has a tendency to fight his hands down. That's fight with his hands down. Miguel Cotto's too fast for that. Miguel Cotto will catch Sergio Martinez. And, you know, he's definitely going to get tested on that. Um, but I think Sergio Martinez puts his hands down um, just like the Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. The only reason he puts his hands down is because he wants to draw the fighter so he can count on him with them bombs. But Miguel Cotto has to be smarter than that. He needs the job, um, the jab, utilize the jab, take the fight to the center of the ring, and just fight in all different angles. And Freddie Roach, he's an offensive trainer, so who else better to get a trainer than Freddie Roach to put in that, that formula to win against Sergio Martinez? Sergio Martinez, on the other hand, um, take Austin Trout, take Panny Pacquiao. Take you know take that formula and know that Miguel Cotto is definitely beatable when you have that dis you have that advantage as far as strength and power is concerned. You know Miguel Cotto hasn't felt that power at that 160 weight division and Sergio Martinez could make it you know could put his ass to sleep early. Um, I honestly think the, the, you know Sergio Martinez just needs to bring it, bring it to him. You know bring it to him. Don't box Miguel Cotto. You box Miguel Cotto, you're gonna lose. I think Sergio Martinez is gonna lose if he brings that fight to the center of the ring. He's going to lose. He's just going to have to come at him. Come at him with everything and come at him with bombs. That's basically it. Work the body, work upstairs, and just press him. You know, because I know the first four rounds, Miguel Cotto is going to be the active fighter. At least that's what Sergio Martinez thinks he is. But I hope Freddie Roach um, change, could, could mix up his approach a little bit. What's my fight prediction on that one? Um, I'm not going to give it. You know, I'm not going to give it yet. I think it's a little too early to go ahead and give it. I'm going to check out the training camp. Um, my heart goes out with Cotto, but um, I just think Sergio Martinez is going to win that fight. But I'm not going to set that in stone yet. I'm going to watch the training. I'm going to see what's going on. I'm going to get more feedback, watch some videos and stuff like that. Yes, I watch YouTube as well. I watch other channels. You know, um, There's a lot of channels I like to watch. And usually I watch them on my cell phone and stuff like that because I'm too busy. I'm out on the road a lot. I'm out on the road a lot. Um, but do I pick and choose my channels? It just all depends. It really all depends because I get an email and stuff like that, you know. I like uh, Ellie Setback. Ellie Setback has that little, you know, has a little different twist. He's always in the scene. So, I, you know, I appreciate that he's always in the gym and stuff like that. I know he has his favorites and stuff, but it's cool to get the, the inside scoop and see how boxers train. And that's, that's all Ellie right there. You know, Dwyer, I watch Dwyer, but Dwyer's a little funny dude, man. But uh, I watch him. He's cool. I respect everybody, you know. But Dwyer, you know, you know, Dwyer comes two weeks later after the fight, give his breakdown, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, Blood Boxing, I listen to him as well. Um, there's a lot of fights. Um, boxing Socialist, I watch some of his shit. Um, even some Filipino news, I watch them. Um, T Street Controversy, that's a funny ass dude right there. T Street, he's funny, man. You know, a lot of people, uh, you know, ha have their thoughts about him, but, you know, I respect the fact that he's him. You know, he's a funny dude. And he knows his shit. He knows his boxing. Majority of the time, he's wrong, but. You got to respect the dude, man. It's not hard. You know, it's not easy just coming over here just staring at a camera and just talking boxing, you know. 
especially if you go live, especially if you're not reading anything, especially if you know you, you're just sitting down. It's kind of bored. You got to kind of get used to it, but you got to respect him, man. Um, he's a character, and he gives he gives it a little twist to it, but he knows his boxing, bro. You know, um, big shout out to him. Um, and other than that, you know, we're just gonna keep doing it. In SBM boxing. Um, we're gonna keep doing our thing. My phone's ringing right now. See, I can't even, I can't even do what I do. And if you see my phone, majority of time is I love POS. That's my company. So that's a, that's a, that's the, that's the phone ringing right now. So that means I gotta get to work, guys. This is Kenneth with SBM Boxing. Friend request: Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Have a good one.